Hello there, everyone. If you're watching this video, then you are part of the TTOR army, an army that is building itself up one subscriber at a time. And as you can see from the title and the thumbnail of today's video today, we're going to be talking about a topic that is not at all pleasant. As a matter of fact, it's going to be for some people, in fact, for a lot of people, it's going to make them even more squeamish than my coverage of the Kent Hovind Chris Jones situation. As you can see by the title and thumbnail of this video, today we're going to be discussing a liberal professor who not only advocates for pedophilia, but he specifically claims that one-year-old toddlers are capable of consenting to sex with adults. I kid you not. But before I launch headfirst right into this article to expose this dirtbag, let's give a little background information first. Back in 2012, 2013, when I was a Facebook user and I used to be part of different and various Facebook groups, there was one period of time where I used to converse with homosexuals regarding homosexuality and the morality behind it, mainly how it's immoral and a sin and a crime against God. And I brought up to the homosexuals on Facebook back then that were in this group that I had discovered pedophilia and bestiality advocacy groups on Facebook that were using the exact same arguments that the homosexual community did to get homosexuality normalized and legalized by the U.S. Supreme Court, and that these advocacy groups were even giving the homosexuals credit for providing the winning strategy to getting their degeneracy normalized and legally protected. And, of course, the homosexual community back then were like, oh, no, no, that kind of behavior is wrong. Pedophilia is wrong. And the reason why they claim it was wrong is that, well, children aren't capable of consenting to that, so therefore ped pedophilia is not the same as homosexuality, and it should never be normalized and given legal protections like the homosexual communities did. I responded to their response by pointing out that at some point in the future, it was going to be claimed by the academic world and by society at large that children were capable of consenting. And of course, I was not believed. I was ridiculed and mocked. I was laughed out of the room, so to speak. But unfortunately for them and unfortunately for me as well, I turned out to be 100% on the mark. Which leads to today's article in question, given to us by LifeNews.com. The article is titled, Liberal Professor Defends Wanting to Have Sex with a 12-Year-Old. The article reads, A professor of ethics and philosophy at the State University of New York at Fredona, SUNY, said it is not obvious to him that an adult wanting to have sex with a child is wrong, according to videos obtained by the Twitter account Libs of TikTok. Imagine that an adult male wants to have sex with a 12-year-old girl. Imagine that she is a willing participant, SUNY professor Dr. Stephen Kirshnar said. A very standard, very widely held view that there's something deeply wrong about this and it's wrong independent of it being criminalized. It's not obvious to me that it is in fact wrong. I think this is a mistake, Kirshnar said. I think exploring why it is a mistake will tell us not only things about adult child sex and statutory rape, but also about fundamental principles of morality. Now, if you want to know more about Stephen Kushner, well, here's his bio at Fredonia State University of New York. It says here in his bio... Stephen Kirshner is a distinguishing teaching professor in the philosophy department at the State University of New York at Fredonia and an attorney. <laughs> oh boy, well this is going to cause issues. He focuses on applied ethics and political philosophy. Kirshner has written 100 articles and book chapters on such diverse topics as abortion, adult child sex, hell, most valuable player, pornography, punishment, sexual fantasies, slavery, and torture. He is the author of 10 books, including Desert Collapses, Why No One Deserves Anything, Total Collapse, The Case Against Morality and Responsibility, and Abortion in Hell and Shooting Abortion Doctors, Does the Pro-Life Worldview Make Sense? Now, I don't know about you guys, but when a man writes a book titled Total Collapse, The Case Against Morality and Responsibility, this indicates to me that the author not only doesn't believe that objective morality outside of the human mind exists, 
but he also believes that there's no such thing as accountability for your sins. No accountability for violating any moral standards, whether they be objective or subjective. Only an atheist leftist couldn't write a book like that. So I feel very safe in calling this guy an atheist and a leftist professor. But let's get back to the article, because if you don't have your barf bags ready now, you might want to get them pulled out. The notion that it is wrong, even with a one-year-old, is not quite obvious to me, Kirshnar said. The Sunni professor cited reports about foreign cultures, which he admits he doesn't know to be true, where grandmothers allegedly fillet boy, baby boys to calm them down, which he said makes it hard to see what would be wrong with it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this leftist atheist professor literally just claimed there's nothing wrong with an adult having sex with a one-year-old. You saw it on screen. And there's a hyperlink to it if you really want to go see it. I'll have a link to this article in the description box below. But I don't want to actually vomit on screen, so we're not going to go to that hyperlink. Oh, but it does not get better. It gets worse. Kirshnar also compared minor consent to sex as similar to agreeing to play a kickball game or participate in a lesson because there's lots of activities that children engage in that they don't understand all that well. So basically, the idea is that children consent to things that they don't fully understand all the time, whether it's, okay, yeah, I'll play a game of kickball with you. Yeah, I'll play basketball with you. Yeah, I'll play toys with you. Yeah, I'll play video games with you. Basically, the argument is that because they consent to activities that they don't fully understand, sex with an adult should be no different. See all of you homosexuals and lefties 10 years ago who laughed at me when I said that they would claim that children are capable of consenting? You have a leftist philosopher professor, a philosophy professor, literally arguing that children as young as one year old are capable of consenting to sex with an adult. Or at the bare minimum, that there's nothing wrong with it. See, this is what happens when you deny the existence of God and the existence of sin, and you deny that there's any accountability whatsoever for those sins. This is where it ultimately leads to, if you let it, you end up advocating not just for pedophilia, but for having sex with one-year-olds if you're an adult. That's where this atheist worldview can lead you if you let it do its thing over time. But let's just pile it on right here. <clears throat> In another video where Kirshner is talking with Thaddeus Russell of Renegade University on his podcast, Unregistered. <laughs> wow, that's an ironically named uh, podcast. <clears throat> Kirshner discussed the belief that adult minor sex is a matter of rights infringement because adolescents can't give valid consent. An argument neither Kirshner nor Russell said they were convinced by. <laughs> Couldn't possibly because uh, they probably have done the deed or have at least thought about doing the deed or they're defending people who have. Couldn't be any of those things, right? We make children do all sorts of things that they don't want to do, Kirshner said. A statement Russell affirmed and thanked Kirshner for expressing. We make them go to church. We make them go to temple. We tell them to go to school. They got to go to the dentist. They got to go to their sister's ballet recital. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. According to this enlightened leftist professor, an adult having sex with children is no different than forcing a child to go to church, go to temple, go to school, go to the dentist, attend their sister's ballet recital. Because apparently having sex with children is just that trivial, guys. It's no big deal. Russell said he has been making arguments more or less in defense of adult child sex in classrooms for 25 years. Kirshner cited meta-studies suggesting that sex between adult males and underage males is not harmful, or if it is harmful, we can't decide whether the harm is due to the sex itself or the fact that society goes berserk over it. <laughs> it's not bad because it's actually bad. It's only bad because society has been conditioned to go berserk over the idea of an adult male and underage male having a sexual relationship. Uh, it's just social standards, guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, maybe I should have a barf bag down there. I don't know.
Regarding the law, Kirshner said that if we don't know whether willing sex with 15-year-olds is going to have net good or bad consequences, that activity should not be criminalized. Oh, yeah, because there's absolutely no uh, teenagers who got uh, molested by adults that have any kind of trauma. No, those teenagers don't exist. We don't know if there's bad consequences to it. Just ignore all the traumatized people who are traumatized because when they were 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, they got molested by an adult. Yeah, go tell that to all of Chris Jones's victims. Yeah, try that one on for size. Kirshnar went on to say, Attraction to prepubescent individuals is fairly widespread among young men in our society. A claim he said indicates a strong benefit to adult child sex. So, wait, 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 wait. So, because young men... More young men than we'd like to think allegedly have a pretty widespread attraction to prepubescent individuals. This proves that there is a benefit to adult child sex. A murderer has a strong attraction to murdering his victims. Does that mean that there's a benefit or strong benefit to murder? Does this mean that people who have the urge to steal things, that there's a strong benefit to theft and therefore we should decriminalize theft and make it normal? I mean, this logic that he's applying to justify adult child sex or, let's face it, pedophilia, this logic he's using to justify pedophilia can be used to justify literally anything, including all the things that he thinks are objectively wrong. But oh wait guys, there's more. Kirshnar is the author of the 2015 book titled Pedophilia and Adult Child Sex, a philosophical analysis which looks at the moral status of such adult child sex according to the book description. He said the problem is that it is not clear whether these judgments are justified and whether they are aesthetic or moral. The book description says that many people find it disgusting to view images of obese people having sex, but it is hard to see what is morally undesirable about such sex. Here, the judgment is aesthetic, as an analogy to justify adult child sex. Oh, you know, you people think that obese people having sex together is just so oh, disgusting and vile, but that's just an aesthetic thing. And apparently this is supposed to justify the, uh, the disgusting factor that's involved with adult child sex. Well, you think having sex between fat people is wrong and disgusting, but it's technically not. So your judgment of that is just aesthetic. So this ew factor that you have for adult child sex is the same thing, really. Therefore, you shouldn't condemn adult child sex. That's the logic being used here. And of course, uh, hmm... In a 2003 paper, A Liberal Argument for Slavery, Kirshner argued a slavery contract is not a rights violation and described his strategy to show that formation and enforcement of a slavery contract does not necessarily infringe upon anyone's moral rights or lead to pejorative exploitation and hence maybe not be disallowed on liberal grounds. So... Wow, so not only does this guy advocate for pedophilia and committing acts of pedophilia on one-year-olds, he argues for slavery. He is pro-slavery. Wow. Almost like all the Democrats back who in the day who tried to resist the slaves being freed. Wow. This guy belongs in the KKK, apparently. And then, of course, because he's a leftist, <clears throat> Kirshner authored a book in 2014 titled Gratitude Toward Veterans, Why Americans Should Not Be Very Grateful to Veterans. So not only does he justify and advocate for pedophilia, not only does he advocate for slavery, but he also advocates for hating on veterans. Wow, this guy is as left as you can get and as disgusting as you can get. Now, the last two paragraphs are where we need to leave this story off. SUNY Fredonia President Stephen H. Collison said in a statement that he was aware of a video online involving one of the university professors expressing views Collison described as reprehensible. Collison said the professor's views do not represent the values of SUNY Fredonia and that the matter is being reviewed. SUNY Fredonia and Renegade University did not respond to the Daily Caller News Foundation's request for comment. So, of course, the university this whack job works for, this disgusting freak works for, is disavowing him publicly, but who knows what's going on behind the scenes. Hopefully this guy is not going to be employed at SUNY Fredonia much longer. 
if he hasn't been canned already, of course. Not only is this story that we just went through absolutely disgusting, it's just yet another example of what happens if you let atheism take its course in your life. You become a woke lefty, and if you let it go far enough because you deny God's existence, because you deny the existence of sin, and because you deny accountability for sin, you start going to some really dark places like advocating for pedophilia, and within that topic, advocating for sex with one-year-olds, and then you start advocating for slavery, and because we've been told by our woke overlords that veterans are bad, well, this guy also craps all over veterans in one of his books. I know that there are a number of atheists and non-believers out there who enjoyed watching my videos exposing Kent Hovind regarding his relationship and defense of Chris Jones, but I am not someone who goes after one side when it comes to the issue of pedophilia. I go after all of them. And you got leftist atheists running around out there in positions of power in academia who not only are advocating for pedophilia, not only advocating that children are allegedly capable of consenting to sex with adults, but they're also advocating for sex with one-year-olds. You have people like that in your ranks, atheists and non-believers. And if you're going to crap all over the Christians for having people in their community who claim to be Christians and yet they actively defend and justify pedophiles, well then, you better be tossing guys like this out on the curb. You better be denouncing this guy just as hard as you would denounce Kent Hovind for defending Chris Jones.